what is it that you want to be able to do with Stable Diffusion? It's create great looking images, right? You'll be able to start instantly creating images that look just like this. So if you're ready to create some great looking images, hassle free, let's do it. Welcome to this insert. I forgot to mention that you need a NVIDIA GPU in order to run this software today. If you don't know what kind of GPU you have, or if you don't know what a GPU is, just check out the first five minutes of my installing stable diffusion video. Okay, like I said, this is literally a one click install. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the link down there in the description. And that is going to take you to the GitHub page. And when you get there, you're going to see two different versions. You're going to see a previous old version, and then you're going to see the current version. And we're just going to click and download that current version. Big file, it's almost two gigs. So it might take a minute to download. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this directly on my C drive. And what I'm doing is I'm right clicking new folder and I'm just going to call the folder focus <laughs> without all the extra O's in there. And the reason I'm creating a folder to do this is so that when I download this file, it's going to download into that folder I just created. That way, when I extract the file, all of the focus files will stay within that one folder right there. It just keeps everything neat and organized. So I'm going to go ahead now and download that file. And this is going to take, uh, it's almost done. It's actually going really fast for two gigs. And, and there we go. And we are done. So we can go ahead and close this. Go to our Windows Explorer. Primary drive is C. I created the folder called Focus. It's right there. And I'm going to right click and extract. Now I have 7-zip installed. 7-zip is a handy little file for extracting uh, zip files like this. If you don't have 7-zip, I'll put a link in the description for you. The program's absolutely free. It's a great little program. So I'm going to go here. We're going to go extract here. And we're just going to extract everything right in this same focus folder. And now this is going to extract to be quite large. I believe it's around 5.5 gigs by the time we're done from a little bit under 2 gigs that we downloaded. And it's going to take just a minute here to extract. So while it extracts, I'll probably go ahead and uh, pause the video and I'll pick back up here in just a second. All right, and we are done. It has fully extracted and I'm going to go ahead and delete the, uh, the zip file here. We no longer need that. Now, when I said this was a one click install, I really mean it. What you're going to do is right here, you're going to see a run.bat file and we're going to double click that. And when we double click it, it's going to begin to download and install focus right here in this folder that we just created and uh, it's going to download any necessary file. So in other words, if your system doesn't have Python installed or any of the other uh, uh, files necessary in order for focus to be able to run, it will download all of those. So we're going to go ahead and just double click this, let it start going. Now this is going to take a, a couple minutes here. Uh, it's also going to download a checkpoint model for a, it's a uh, SDXL model. It downloads Juggernaut XL and that's a big file in itself. If I remember correctly, I believe that's somewhere around seven gigs. Uh, so it's going to take a minute. I'm just going to pause again while this downloads. All right, Juggernaut's just about downloaded. And that does that. And there we are. We are in. We are in focus. How about that? I like that. Okay. Here's the uh, the simple interface. It's very 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 basic. Uh, that's kind of what makes it really cool. And down here, we're just going to type a prompt. And I just want you to see how easy this is. We're going to do. Oh, what should we do? What's what's a? You know what? Let's do the. Uh, I did a. What was it? a clown <laughs> riding a duck down a busy city okay 
I did a video on how to install st uh, stable diffusion and this was my test image and the test image looked absolutely terrible uh, through automatic 1111 with the default install with the uh, uh, the base checkpoints looked just absolutely terrible let's see what we get here exact same prompt all defaults let's go here it comes see if it looks anything like a duck and anything like a clown ah we got a clown on a a duck scooter uh, we're still going still going still going yeah looks like we're gonna wind up with a clown on a duck scooter now one thing about focus by default it does do two images at a time so it's going to create a second image here for us and let's see what we get. we get another scooter okay so we are gonna get a clown on a basically a duck flavored scooter is what it looks like oh this one here we get a hawk or an eagle in the sky as well that's that's kind of that's kind of cool but look it, you know what I will try and find the image that the uh, the default installation on the automatic 1111 created for this prompt and put these up side by side because there is just a world of difference in what we have here and what automatic 1111 created let's see what we get Uh, that doesn't look a whole lot like a duck, but <laughs> yeah, uh, let's generate a new one. So there's, there is that. And, um, now down here, you're going to see this advanced tab. We're going to populate a little bit of information over here on the right hand side by clicking this advanced tab. And I'll show you what that does. Click that now you have all your options for all your different image sizes uh, let's do a one-to-one -one. and you've got some options up here uh, as far as uh, image generation do you prefer to have your image generated quickly or would you rather have your image of higher quality you can also do extreme speed if you're just trying to get maybe some concepts down let's go quality we'll do a one-to-one -one. in other words a square image and I'm gonna just um, regenerate the same prompt here and see what difference it makes with the quality all right so again oh and if you want to change your number of images like I said it defaults to two here's your two we can just drag this over here to one Victorian era woman we'll make her 28 long dark brown hair green eyes give her a stoic expression gonna have her wear mm, an ivory dress a lace dress ivory lace dress up oh, let's change that wear to wearing wearing an ivory lace dress you know what let's give her a lace collar adorned with a ruby um, what else let's make her important small gold crown make it a princess crown small gold princess crown okay the background I want deep rich br browns and gold background let's give her Rembrandt lighting and some catch lights in her eyes and you know what let's do a fireplace and some candles in the background not candles candles all right, now it doesn't know what catch light is. Um, well, it's not that it doesn't know, the spell check doesn't know. So I'm wondering if I can leave that or if I should hyphenate it. I'm gonna hyphenate it just to be safe. All right, so let's see what that gives us here. This should be, should be really nice. 
Now, I'm a sucker for uh, Victorian images. I love everything about the Victorian style. All right. So we've got our crown, we've got our hair, I can see the green eyes, we have the ivory dress, we got the, uh, we got a lace uh, around her neck with a ruby attached to it, we've got the fireplace in the background, and candles. I mean, I believe that is every single thing that's in my prompt. That is so ridiculously good. To just be able to get an image like that on the very first try with your prompt is that's just unreal. Now her head is turned to the side. One thing that I've noticed about focus as opposed to automatic 1111 is that when earrings are involved, almost always the earrings match. It does an excellent job of generating earrings. Let's do one more image here. See uh, if this one's going to be forward facing. If so, we'll see if the earrings match. Uh, I think her head's tilted just a little bit too much for us to be able to see the other earring there. But again, we have, we have the ivory dress, we have the lace around the neck, we have the rubies, we have the crown, fireplace in the background, the candles, her age is correct, her hair is correct, her eyes are correct. I mean, it just, it picked up on every single thing that I put in the prompt. And of course, that's the way it should be. But that is not the experience, at least my experience, with uh, Automatic 1111. This is, it's just phenomenal. This is the way that I like to work generating images. This is great. Open it full size here. I mean, I don't know for sure that this is any better than it was before because I didn't look at the other one. <laughs> but this looks, this looks really good to me. Um, I mean, the details are, are great. And if I were to upscale this, it would look fantastic. That's, it's a nice image. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna go full body. I'm just gonna add full body in here, but I don't think it's going to do anything. And I'll show you why. Generate again. Let's see if we get the full body. I imagine we'll probably just get the upper portrait here. Yep, we're just gonna get the upper body. Now, what I've noticed is if you want a full body, I'm just gonna stop this from generating because it's never gonna to get to the full body. If you go into your settings here, and right now we're on one to one, um, if you go into something that's more um, portrait oriented, like say for example this, and now I click generate, chances are I probably will get a full body. And it's not going to be a full body, it's going to be a fuller. Uh, we're down just a little bit below the waist. There are some tricks you can do if you really need a full body. Sometimes you can put things in like a shot from a distance, shot at a distance. Sometimes you can simply describe their shoes or what they're standing on um, and that helps. You know what? I'll do that. I'll do full body standing on red. <laughs> carpet. Just go ahead and let this one finish here since it's almost done. <clears throat> now I do detect it looks like her hands are kind of funky. Yep, those are some funky hands right there, the fingers are. That could be fixed with in-painting, uh, which I'll do another video on the in-painting here. Let's see if we can get a full body now since I put, she's, you know what, I didn't put her shoes on. Uh, let's just put heels. All right, so she, full body, I'm going to put wearing high heels, wearing high heels, standing on a red carpet. See if that makes any difference here. If it doesn't, then we may have to weight those up. Nope, I got it. All right, so a lot of times if you can't get the full body image, just describe something that, describe either the feet or something that the feet are on. And usually that will, that will do the trick. I like this. I love the gown that she's in. I love that train the, with the uh, the lace on the sleeves and then the uh, the crown. Love the, uh, oh my goodness, the woodwork detail here. 
the uh, painting that's on the wall and then the candles on each side this this is nice I like this a lot let's see that full size yeah her face could be more pleasant but um that's that's a nice image I like that a lot all right so if anything in this video was helpful to you do me a favor hit that like button down there Thank you.